Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. It is now time for Inside the Ten, where we discuss all the hot topics around the games at the moment. Adam Pengilly joins us this morning. Danica. Great to have you on. Dave Riccio, as always. Hey, Danica. And Gus Gould, he's sitting in. He uh, missed uh, his uh, battle on 100% footy, so he wanted to sit inside for Inside the Ten. So we've got some good topics coming your way. Cool. Um, all right, well, let's start off um, with the Roosters. Uh, all the off-field headlines, uh, like Walker, Joey Manu, Swali and Jason Riles derailing the Roosters' season. Oh, well, sign Roosters like on the weekend, wasn't it, Danica? That performance against Penrith, that was completely outclassed. And we're just not used to seeing the Roosters have almost 50 points put on them. I wouldn't say that headlines are derailing their season at the moment, but they can become some sort of issue. We've had so much talk about Suali lately. Obviously, Jason Rolls is going to stay at the club. Trent Robinson and Nick Politis are, are pretty good at controlling the narrative around that club, but if this keeps going on a bit longer, it probably can have an adverse effect. This is, um, this is a situation we haven't seen the Roosters in for some time, to be fair. and I think they're, they're in a pretty deep hole. The one thing we know about the Roosters is they don't stay down for too long. They, they, they have a, an ability to resurrect themselves quite quickly. It reminds me almost of 16. In, 16, in 2016, the Roosters finished 15th that season. And then in 17, they went and played in a prelim final. And I, th I feel like, yeah, they're, 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 these issues, they're not great. They're not great. And they can be destabilising, but they do have a rich culture of, 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 of closing ranks and getting through it. I, I, don't, think, I don't think it's going to be a quick fix, but I'm not saying I, I wouldn't write them off at the back end of this year either. Mm. Gus? They only become talking points if you're losing. Mm. They don't become talking points when you're winning. You know? So the Roosters need to get back to playing their best football and winning some games. That's what they're paid to do. They've got a roster that I think every team in the competition would love to have, um, but it's just not gelling for them at the moment for whatever reason. Now, when you're not winning or you're not playing to your best, then these types of issues become media items because everyone wants to know why they're not doing what they're doing. They've got to get back to the football. At the start of the year, I said they were playing like an angry football team. They weren't concentrating on the actual... Football. They haven't made a lot of changes to their style of attack or play over the years because they believe in it. And that might be right or wrong, but they need to start winning with it um, for some confidence. What's the situation at the moment with Sam Walker from your mail? Are you yep. hearing, will the, will the Chooks let him go? Uh, look, all the commentary from within the Roosters is they want Sam Walker there for the next 10 years. However, while ever a player is sitting in reserve grade and a player of high quality and isn't in first grade, that's when suggestions start. It just happens. Sam Walker's a rich talent. Like he's, he's a, a, a prodigious, prodigious talent and he would prefer to be playing first grade. Now, whether he, his management or people around him are making inquiries at other clubs, it's happened. It's happening. Now, but at the same time, I don't believe the Roosters at this point are shopping him around. I think I believe what they're saying and that they, they see a future and want him to be, to be a success at the Roosters. But how long does the kid wait, Dave? Like, is he going to wait there another six months, 18 months if he can't crack that NRL yeah. team and, and hang around? Like well, well, you know how the game works, Pete. Yeah, yeah, he'll find another club somewhere else. And it's unfortunate for him, Danica. He would have got a chance next week with Joey Martin's injury. But unfortunately, Sam's hurt his knee going to be out for a few weeks as well. So Luke Curie is potentially playing in the halves with maybe even Drew Hutchison next week. Week. So, I don't know. I feel like Sam is, a, is an amazing talent. I'm probably very frustrated playing reserve grade at the moment. If he gets to the end of the season, he's not playing regular NRL, I'm sure there's going to be a very interesting off-season in store. Can you see the Roosters letting him go, Gus? I wouldn't think so. I, I don't think so. I'm, I'm looking at their lower grades. I don't think they've got another one in mind. Sam Walker is nowhere near the peak of his career yet. I mean, he started very, very young. I think he's done an outstanding job to get where he is at the moment. You know, maybe they feel as though he needs a few weeks off. As I understand it, he's got a partial tear to his ACL at the moment, which is why he's not playing. Um, had he been available this week, I, dealt, I think they'd be rushing him back in from what I saw of their performance the other night. So I still think he's the long-term plan for them. If not, I want to know what their long-term plan is. It's certainly not Luke Keary in the long term. Um, and Sam Walker's a long way from the best part of his career. So they've put all the work into him. Why would they let him go now? It's right, he's not going to tolerate being in reserve grade too long, mm. nor will those people around him tolerate him being in reserve grade too long. He doesn't want to be there. so. But I think there's an opportunity to get him back into that side once he's fit and well. A mm. uh, big game today for Tom Trebojevic. There has been a lot of commentary around his fitness, whether his body's right. Is he too great a risk for Freddie to pick him for uh, No, in my opinion, Danica, no. I think it's as simple as Freddie picking up the phone, saying to Tom, are you OK? What's going on? Tell us how you're feeling. And if Tom gives him the green light, I'd pick him for State of Origin from Game 1. He's, he's been there before he's done that. I know he seems like he hasn't hit uh, top stride yet this year. He's really struggled to really stretch out and find his best form. But I think from a New South Wales point of view, you've just got to have him there. 
I personally, I think he's in my team. I think the key factor here is that we're not actually talking about picking Tom Trebojevic at fullback for the New South Wales Blues. It's at centre. Mm. And the, the, what, we're, what we're, you know, analysing Trebojevic on is his, is his running game, 20, his 20, 30 metre sprint. Well, I don't see much of that at centre in origin. Some of Tom's best work is 10 metres out, you know, all power, hips, torso, crashing over out wide in origin. Um, yes, that may change that roaming role that we've seen Freddie use with Turbo. That may change. But I, I would... I don't think it's as great a risk as what the suggestions are because of the positional change. We're, we're looking at... We're thinking that Tom's going to play fullback for the Blues. That's not the case. Mm. And so, I, I'd... So look, today's huge. Today's big. But I, would, I wouldn't have a problem because it's at centre. Gus? I'm very keen to see him play today. I, I think it's been... I said on 100% footy the other night that I think he's just stressed at the moment. I think he's worrying about everyone else in the team. He's such a great kid and he's such, he loves his team and he loves his club so much. He would be worried about everyone else and why the team's not performing. He'd be worried about him doing his job and how can I help him and how can I help him. He needs to help himself a little bit more. And that probably means being a little bit selfish, which is not in his, is not in his DNA. But I think he has to be. I think he has to come out and play for himself. Players like this, great players like this, I would have no hesitation in picking the origin side because as soon as they get back into that camp and they smell the room and they smell, you know, and they see the blue jersey, they click up and, they, and they're ready to go. So I think he'd be a certainty pick for the New South Wales side and I wouldn't even hesitate to pick him, uh, provided he's physically sound, and I believe he is physically sound. I think it's more, it's more a mental thing with him at the moment. I think he's more worried about where Manly is rather than where he is and he probably just needs to be a bit more selfish with that. And that wouldn't be a problem if he came into New South Wales camp because he wouldn't be It would actually be where... a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. I've had players like that that have sort of been struggling with struggling teams at club level and it's like a breath of fresh air when they come into Origin and then they're so much better for the rest of the mm. season for having been a part of Origin. You so know. it could it could benefit it can the pick Seagulls, them up. It, yeah. it, it would actually do the world a good to get back into camp with those great players and then not have to focus on what's going on at his club. Um, what about the situation? Is picking Caelan Ponga a too big of a risk for Billy considering his what we have seen him come back after his time off with concussions, the performances that he's had? Is that gr too great a risk? Well, everyone's got some sort of risk. I said to Caelan Ponga after Game 3 last year, that's the greatest game I've ever seen him play. Mm -hmm. It was. And I think he was a big part of Queensland winning that series and winning that game in particular. It was the best football I've ever seen him play. I haven't seen anything close to that this year. And obviously he's got that concussion issue. They've changed in positions. I've got no idea what Queensland are intending to do. Whether they want to play him fullback. If you want to pick a Queensland fullback, Rhys Walsh is a shoe-in mm -hmm. on the form he's showing at the moment. Uh, with none of the risks that you're probably associating with Kalen right at this time. But Kalen, Queensland don't win that series last year without Kalen Ponga. Mm. And that's, like, Queensland generally reward that. What's your take on oh, this one? Like, I know he hasn't had a great season so far this year, Danica, but runs on the board at origin level for Billy, I think, and the Queensland selectors will be huge. Um, I'd still be picking Kalen Ponga in my team, as provided he gets through, obviously, the, today and then next week as well with, without any issues. I think he's got to be in part of that Queensland team somewhere. It's my mail is, you'll, you'll, my mail is Newcastle will win today because he's on. Mm. Everything out of Newcastle says Kalen's on this week. So I'm really keen to mm. get to a TV at 2 o'clock and have a look because... They reckon he's trained the house down. Well, apparently he stayed. Yeah, he stayed in Newcastle over the bye and just trained and and put in all the hard yards. I've heard it from three sources. They mm. said he has trained the house down, mm. ready for this game today. That's good news for Newcastle. Oh, look, I think Billy takes Billy takes Callum Ponger on trust, and as Gus has said, that that performance last series was outstanding. It, it's, it was superb and. And maybe, maybe it is a case of the same... It's almost identical situation to Turbo where Kalen goes into Origin camp and comes out an even better player for Newcastle. Possibly. Um, I'd pick him. I'd pick him. Reese Walsh is he's close. He's there. I don't think his performance the other night was too good against the Melbourne Storm. I, th I thought that would have hurt him, Reese Walsh. Um, but Kalen Ponga has got the runs on the board. Mm. All right, well, not long to go before... Uh, that? the, that's the buzzer. <laughs> that means we're out of time.